How's it going everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to give you a quick friendly reminder to remember to wash your hands because COVID is still out there and it's still rampant. And I thought on that note so that we can all remember to wash our hands, we could do another CSS battle where we are going to build this sexy blood red bar of soap. Although I don't think I'd actually use this if that was my only option at like Walmart or something. But we are going to build that. And if you're interested in learning how to build that with this CSS and HTML, be sure to stick around. So for any of you new to this channel in this series where we basically challenge ourselves with CSS Battle, CSS Battle is a site you can go to to practice your CSS skills to build out these beautiful pieces of artwork using only CSS and HTML. And you try to build it with the least amount of characters as possible. Now, I don't always try to minify my code as much as possible because I don't think that actually helps you out in the real world. If you're interested in seeing how to build artwork like this, we are going to go ahead and dive into it. So in this challenge, we're going to be doing this red bar of soap. So if I go ahead and click this, it'll take us to our prompt. Now a real five second overview on the left, we have the area where we can type our code. This left panel here is where you can preview your code. And the right is the image that we are trying to build out with just CSS and HTML. So let's just go ahead and get started. So to be able to solve these types of CSS artwork, what I like to do is ask myself some questions. So the first question we're going to try to solve is how do we make this red rectangle, right? So the actual bar of soap. So one thing you could do is if you know anything about CSS, we could probably increase the width of this to maybe be 200 pixels. All right, so that is how we can make the bar of soap wider. We could just change the width. And then secondly, we see here that the, the corners of the soap is actually rounded, right? So in order to do that in CSS, there is a property you can use, say border radius, with a hyphen in between the border and the radius, and you can provide a pixel or a percentage value. So to make it rounded just a certain amount, we could go ahead and say 20 pixels and see how that looks. And if you can see here, it looks pretty good. Our little bar of soap is coming along. So the second thing that you might notice is that the background color of our prompt is white and we actually want it to be this blue. So if you go down here to the uh, colors and you click on them, it'll copy it to your clipboard. And what you can go ahead and do is just apply a style to the entire body. So I could say body with curly braces and I'm gonna say background colon and paste that color in. And now we have a background color of that nice blue that was provided to us in the color prompt. Additionally, you might notice that the soap that we have in our rectangle here is a little bit different color than the one that's in the target. So I'm going to copy the second color and go ahead and overwrite the background here. And now we are closer to what we're trying to build. So the next question we need to ask is how do we actually center this on the page? And there's actually a couple ways to center stuff with CSS. The easiest way is probably just apply some margin left and margin top to this bar of soap to get it to be positioned in the center. You could also use Flexbox or you could use maybe Transform of Translate. But let's just go ahead and try margin right now and see if we can get it close to where we want. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick something arbitrary and say margin 100 to 100 and see how close that gets us. You can see here the margin left 100 got us pretty close, but our bar of soap is a little bit too far to the right and too far down. So let's just try to move it up some, maybe 10 pixels. So I'm going to say 90 and 90. And at that point, we look pretty good. I think our bar of soap is still too far over to the left, so we could try to move it over. So your first property of the margin attribute in CSS is your top margin. The second one would be your left margin, okay? So as I increase the second one, you see how it gets pushed over more to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and try 92 and see if that puts us in a better position. All right, so that is looking pretty slick in my opinion. All right, so the next question we need to ask ourselves is how do we actually add some depth to this bar? So you notice here there is a darker little red that we want to add in. Well, one way you could do it is probably add another rectangle that's the same shape of the one we just made. And then you can give it a Z index so it's behind the one we just made. And then you can change the color of it. The approach I'm gonna take is just add a box shadow to the one we have and just apply some shadow at the bottom of that spar soap. So the property we can use is called box shadow and it takes in four arguments. You can provide the X offset, which I'll say zero. You can provide a Y offset, which I'll say 20. And then you can provide a blur and I'll say zero. And then you can also provide the color. So I'll paste that in there. And now we have a nice blurred box shadow underneath our bar of soap. All right, so we're making some progress. We're almost there. So the last thing is we need to add this Inter, inner, like, you know, a bar of soap has like a dip in it, at least some bars of soap. I use Irish Spring, it doesn't have a dip. But anyway, so what we need to do is we need to add this little pill shape and put it right in the center. So what we could do is if you know anything about CSS, you could probably add another HTML element here and just position it inside or use whatever margin or position absolute. But a trick that I'm gonna do is just add an after pseudo element. So I'm gonna say div, colon colon after give it an empty content content 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple of attributes. So I'm gonna first of all say the width is 100 pixels, the height is 20 pixels or 30 pixels, whatever, it doesn't really matter, we'll have to figure it out. And then the border radius looks like it probably needs to be rounded the same amount as our current bar. So, so I'll say 20 pixels and I'll give it a position of absolute. And then finally, it's probably needs to be changed to a darker color. So I can say background of that. And now at this point it shows up, but unfortunately it's positioned in the top left of our bar. So if we actually wanna move it down. So we could again, just either give it some margin or we can give it some top attributes. So essentially the position of absolute, I'm gonna say top of 20 pixels. And notice that our little dip goes out of our bar of soap, which is kind of strange. So to fix that, what we can do is give this div right here a position of absolute or relative, it doesn't really matter. I'll just do relative. This is, again, this is just one approach. You could add margins, you could do paddings, whatever you wanna do just to achieve it. But you can play around to try to reduce the amount of characters you have. Right now we're at 432, which is quite a lot of characters. People have solved this in like 170 characters or 130. So those people are geniuses, much smarter than me. But one thing I'll notice off the bat is that our dip is a little small. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make the width of 40. And that looks a little bit more accurate. I could add some more top to it. And that makes it look like it's in the right position. And then finally we need to move it over. So I'm gonna say left of 30 pixels. And that looks like it is positioned correctly. And then finally we should probably add some width to it. That looks pretty good. There you have it. It's all a beautiful bar of soap. So you can wash that COVID off of your hands after you uh, go to the supermarket. So at this point, let us just go ahead and submit our code and see what we score. Right on baby, we got a 605. And if we cancel this, it tells us that we got a 100% match, which means that we did pretty good. Secondly, you can go to leaderboards and see what other people have done. You can't actually look at the code that they've done and how they solved it, but you can see how many characters they got it in, 128, which is pretty impressive. So if you can figure out how to reduce my 448 characters down to 108, 128, whatever it was, let me know. So a real quick recap, let's talk about what we learned. We learned about how to make rounded edges on a div. We learned about how to position divs on the page using either margin or position absolute and give it a top and a bottom. We learned how to add box shadow to kind of give that nice little depth look of the soap. We learned about the different colors that we can apply as backgrounds to our divs. We learned about the colon colon after attribute you can apply to your selectors to basically add on content after your div or you can also use that colon colon before to add content before just to kind of save you some words typing html and i think that's all we kind of learned i'm sure there's something else that you might have learned but if you thought this video was good and you thought you learned something with css using the css battles i highly recommend that you give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment below if you want to see more videos like this be sure to subscribe and leave me some comments as well because if you enjoy these videos, I wanna keep making them for you. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go do something else, like play around with Svelte or React. Now, all in all, you will not become a master web developer and know how to build portfolio websites for beautiful websites for people by doing CSS battles. But at the very least, this is a great way to just challenge yourself and have a little bit of fun along the way to improve your CSS skills. And what I recommend is that after you try to solve a challenge, go online and see how other people did it, learn about other types of CSS properties you can apply to maybe reduce the amount of characters that you use. And uh, yeah, let me know if there's another challenge that you wanna see me do. So I hope you all have a really great day and happy coding.